Planning to failure is the absolute best way to achieve the best results in the gym, if you know how to do it right. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to do it right. To understand how to train for failure, something that I will tell you is you shouldn't actually do this all the time. Taking complex movements close to failure can increase the risk of technical breakdown. Increasing the risk of technical breakdown under heavy loads is where we increase the risk of injury. We don't wanna do that. So how do we do this? periodize our effort or in other words we don't do it every single week we like to start conservative so that we can have room to be able to progress from week to week now to explain this first i need to explain a few simple concepts let's start with rpe that stands for rating of perceived exertion which is the scoring system out of 10 where a 10 rpe is working to absolute failure you are pushing yourself to your absolute limit nine rpe is working very, very hard, but maybe you have about one repetition in reserve. Eight RPE, maybe about two repetitions in reserve, and so on. Now the next concept is RIR, repetitions in reserve, which is a very great way of explaining what nine RPE is, one rep in reserve, eight RPE, two reps in reserve, you get the point. Now I'm gonna give you a four week model that you can use straight away. Week one, start conservative. How conservative? Well, I like to score this about a seven RPE. It's pretty hard to know exactly what seven RPE is, but you've got to go conservative enough to make sure that there are reps in the tank and you aren't going to fail. If you go too light, that's totally fine. It just means that you get to take a bigger jump next week. If you go too heavy, this is where we run into problems. Going to fail on week one means it's going to be pretty hard to progress on week two. And doing the same way week after week just isn't fun. And it is not the best way to get the most out of our training. So starting conservative or seven RPE does a few things. It ensures that you're gonna get all reps and all sets throughout the entire program. And it also ensures that you're gonna be able to do that with excellent lifting technique. Now, week number two, we go up in weight. I like to say RPE eight, but that doesn't matter so much. As long as you've gone up in weight in a logical incremental increase. I like to say anywhere between two to 5% increase. The easier week one was, the bigger that increase will be. Now week two, you're still leaving reps in reserve, so you shouldn't really go to fail, especially considering week one was quite conservative, which gave you a whole week of practicing with excellent technique, and you're gonna come into week two even stronger. Week three is where it should start getting hard. We've increased with the exact same incremental increase as week one to two, which means that we should be getting closer to about nine RPE. 9 RPE is very hard to predict. So sometimes we could be getting to a point where we're taking our sets to fail on week three, but that's totally fine because now you've earned it. Week one and week two was excellent practice at the demands of the entire program. Week two was a little bit harder. Week three is the hardest week of this four week block and we're taking these movements as close to fail as possible while still completing the entire session. Now week four is deload or reassess week. The reason why I say reassess is because not everyone deserves a deload. The simple rule is you need to load before you deload. Now what deloading is, is reducing the amount of fatigue that we've accumulated through our program. The biggest reason why we're fatigued is because we've accumulated so much volume. So the best thing to deload is the amount of volume that we perform. So therefore, if we need to deload, my favorite start point is reducing the total sets by half and maintaining that same logical incremental increase that we followed from week one to two to three and now to week four. How do you know if you need the deload? Well, you should be performing the first set or two and if you feel like you've got the energy to perform the entire session, go for it. If it's getting a bit fatiguing, halve the sets, your session is done. That was fun, we've gone super heavy, we've gone super close to fail, if not to fail, and now we've reduced the volume by half, so therefore we've recovered some of our energy levels. Therefore, we've created a substantial recovery ready to start our next phase and repeat that process. Now, if you feel that week four wasn't a sufficient deload, remember what week one of the next phase is. That is conservative loads. So week four, we've halved the volume, and then week one of the next phase, we've reduced the intensity. So this is how we can guarantee that we're coming into all of our training sessions with the right amount of energy levels and progress from phase to phase all year round. So to wrap this up, it's also important to understand that individual differences play a huge role in the way that each person responds to our style of programming. Some people find things more fatiguing than others. 
And this is a great system that you can follow immediately to understand how your body responds to certain amounts of volume and intensity. So if you find hitting a PB and working to absolute fail and not getting the best out of your training fun, that's fine. But if your goal is to plant the seed, to set yourself up to continual progression week after week, month after month, subscribe for more.